Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we are live here at Orlando Sapphire now. Um, this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Sapphire, uh, where we bring you all the information, the smartest guests. We extract knowledge and share it with you, our community. We're here with Sean Blevins, who's with Opera Solutions. Uh, Opera is a company doing some very interesting innovations around data, around big data, uh, one of the hottest trends. You don't hear a lot of that from SAP. You know, last year we've talking about this on the Cube. Maybe Bill McDermott mentioned it once uh, in his keynote today, or this year about ten or fifteen times. So they're really starting to to get it. Um, Sean, welcome to the Cube. Glad to be first here. First time. Thank uh, you. First time guest and. Uh, we were talking off camera a little bit, Opera, I know a little bit from our man Jeff Kelly, he talks about you guys a lot, pretty hot company, doing some pretty innovative things. Um, you are very familiar with Sapphire, very familiar Absolutely. with SAP, my co-host John Furrier. Hey John, um, how are you? <laughs> so, talk a little bit about Opera, tell us, you know, set it up, set up the discussion here. Who are you guys and what are you all about? All right, so Opera is a, an eight-year-old company, has about 650 employees, What's, in, what's in interesting about it is it has 230 data scientists. So compare that to Google with about 300 scientists. Ours are all pointed to the commercial side of the business, to these very uh, targeted industries and lines of business, right? So these, uh, the, the whole premise of Opera is to industrialize big data predictive analytics in a way that can be used by the C-suite. You know, as things become more complex and we add more layers, more data warehouses, the CEO, the CFO, They've had to, at the CMO, they've had to seed all of that complexity down to IT, right? So they can't actually get just the core agenda items that they have met. And so what, what we've done in this company is we've built a series of signal hubs that take big data sources outside the four walls of the business, unstructured social information, Yelp, uh, Facebook, Twitter, comments on the websites, government information, and we play that out by industry. In a, in, a, in a set of signal applications. So if you want to do customer attrition and fading, and you're a CMO and you want to see exactly how to treat your customers, what products to uh, treat that fading, how do you get a curriculum built where they buy and cross buy? You know, there's one example of that where we used a customer, uh, we, we, they uh, deliver food to homes and they come in with their handheld. So in, in the span of a year, we took two control groups, one who didn't get that treatment and that big signal, a big signal information coming in, and one who did. We drove a hundred million dollars of new business to the bottom line in recommendations. When you buy X, you know you haven't bought this in a while. You should buy Y. And have you thought about this? The other group churned out minus 16 percent. So that'll give you some idea when you're able to look at beyond just the nice little neat rows of data inside your business, but you're able to get to the outside and see how customers buy, what they prefer. Uh, if it's healthcare, it might be revenue leakage and things that are falling out of your business. Um, you know, you look at it, the line item invoice from a big data perspective, you see this should have been four Tylenol and not three, so you missed that one, and Tylenol's in a hospital are what, $1,000, right? So <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you know, there's a lot of revenue that leaks out, and so the whole, maybe they're not that much, right? But these solutions allow you to have an industrialized, repeatable play out of the box um, for big data and predictive analytics. And we announced yesterday, and I, I, you may want to talk more about this, we announced our partnership with SAP HANA so that you know if you're crunching all this information, uh, before we'd have to batch it. We'd have to stage it across a bunch of servers. Now we can literally put both the signal information, we can play more signals, more types of information, and the data science that our scientists produce, the algorithmic models, the blending of those models, all of that goes into a simple, single environment in HANA and now we can collapse the time window from what used to take an overnight batch uh, and maybe even multiple days to do that into moments, into minutes or even seconds depending on what signals and what kind of information you're trying to drive. Okay, so um, I do want to talk about HANA, uh -huh. but before we get there, so you're taking this, so today analytics you get the walled garden approach, right? That's Very right. complex and, and relatively inflexible. Mm -hmm. um, you're bringing in all this external data now, there's a lot of exhaust, John calls it exhaust, there's a lot of like noise that. in there. So you're saying you filter that down and get to you know, the golden nuggets, the needles in the haystack, is it. that right? Is that the promise uh, that you're delivering to the customers? That's exactly right. If you look at the business today, um, I'll give you an example. We were talking to a customer, and for the last several years, their revenue uh, based on demand forecasting was stuck. 
right? 80%. And they have process optimization. They have all, they've done all, everything right internally. There's nothing that they could do any better from a best practice point of view. The challenge was they can only see inside their four, four walls, right? So the options for that are you buy a tool, you try and find a data scientist, and or you maybe you back a busload of consultants up, and you either train up your person on a tool and you get this much lift because the tool does statistical analysis of one kind or another, or you wait two years and you hire 20 people, and at some point after $30 million, then you get the lift you want, but you know, you've had to wait for that. We're talking about weeks and months here, maybe 16 weeks until that, that company can go from 80% accuracy to 90% accuracy mm -hmm. because we bring in all those sources outside the business. So it's very real, it's immediate, and I think the other point is that it's exponential. It's not some incremental 2% thing. It's 30, 40, 50 times what you would expect because it's just the results are as big as the data. Sean, so us as Air, we cover mm -hmm. deeply with big data, and mm -hmm. you're hitting a, a big business benefit. So it's not just like, oh, social media campaigns. This is real business model stuff. That's right. So, That's right. Um, and you're talking about weeks versus you know years and ROI in terms of deployment of That's an right. actual solution. That's right. So it's pretty obvious. So you, do your doors open up pretty pretty fast, I imagine, when you make your pitch to the businesses. But how do you go to the market there? I mean, obviously, um, on the business model side, I mean, because you have to go right to the top. I imagine it's business line, not That's exactly bottom right. up. Take us through how you engage with a, a prospect, for example, and what's the value of the pitch? Okay. So in a nutshell, the first thing is it's non-disruptive, right? So we don't come in there and say you got to buy these things or store this in your infrastructure, you know, redo this, build yet another data warehouse. None of those approaches are, are our approach. We go directly to the C-suite and we say, okay, you're a chief procurement officer. You're running $100 billion a year of, of spend. We will guarantee that we got 30 to $50 million worth of spend we can put back on your bottom line. And the way we do that is we're very focused on non-disruptive as a service coming in. We know where those sources of information are. We know where those categories of spin are. So we focus not on putting the data in nice little refrigerators, right, mm -hmm. but streaming it, right? So looking at it as uh, uh, panning for that gold that you mentioned. I think that's exactly right. And so um, we come in and talk to those C-suite about just those core agenda items that they need. And in the case of some of our customers, you know, we're six months into it, nine months into it, we've done it for someone else, particularly in the, in the areas of spin, fraud, risk, marketing, all those kinds of areas. You know, we find that organizations need to get their media spin right. They need to deal with attrition. So if I, if I hear you correctly, then yeah. you go into the verticals, you build out the methodology, mm -hmm. and then it's leverageable, you can go to other customers. That's exactly right. Even though it's different data, you still have right. external sources. That's exactly and the right. external sources are acquired through deals or just open APIs, or how do you acquire the data? Oh, that's a great question. So obviously the first step is a privacy and NDA agreement, right? And then uh, for the internal data. And then the external data, we just know where it is, and our scientists uh, really come into two teams, the ones who build the predictive models and the data science machine learning piece, yeah. and those who know how to extract the signals. And so extracting the signals is like, you take 50 terabytes across 30 data sources, and that becomes a DNA strand of a terabyte of data. So we're looking for time series over uh, you know, history, behavior. So raw data, then derived data, basically. It, precisely. You got it. That's exactly it. Awesome. I'll give I'll give you an example of of how Hana drives the drives the change around, and we're showing this in the demo floor over here at uh, 228. If you want to go see it, we had a wealth management customer. This customer uh, had a very specific need. When an analyst makes a recommendation. They had over, you know, almost $2 trillion in assets and in inventory. They had uh, 30,000 financial advisors, you know, millions of portfolios with all these different assets, managed, unmanaged. Uh, every one of those customers had different risk tolerance levels. They had different propensity to, to take action. They had uh, the success rate of that analyst over time. So when he says, buy this asset, and he makes that recommendation, our solution would go in, and it took about two and a half days but that advisor would come in on, on, that, on that next Monday morning and there would be five, not 500, but five recommendations that said, get out of stock A, and the machine is writing this language. There are no people involved, right? The machine language says, get out of asset A, get into asset B, and you can go from a minus 3% in this portfolio to plus 5%. So the customer obviously loved that. The problem was we could only do that every two, two and a half days. HANA lets us do it every 30 minutes. 
40 that minutes. Much performance. That's huge. Yeah, maybe, so. maybe, maybe I'm being, you know, maybe I'm being a sales but guy. Maybe it's 60 minutes. Yeah. But it sure is not, it's sure, it's not days. Multiple times per day. Yeah. yeah it's so less we, than a day. Yeah, and we were yeah. driving, you know, ridiculous revenue before because people, obviously, we could go into portfolios and say, you know, here's why you should get out of asset A and B. Right, so let's now it's an intraday thing. Let's talk about revenue. So on okay. the growth side, how, are you guys self-funded? I see you must be throwing off a lot of cash flow on your end. Do you venture back? How old is the company? And Great how questions. How do you guys grow? Company's eight years old. It is cash neutral at this point. We have received a first round Series A investment, uh, a minority investment from Silver Lake, Samaru, and Excel KKR. Uh, they own, uh, you know, they own a minority stake, and. Uh, the, I believe the company was valued somewhere around half a billion dollars. And okay. so- How much did you guys take in? Can oh, I, well, I mean, that, uh, we're a private company. But did you announce the funding? Did we did announce the funding, yes. Did you announce 84 million. 84 mil. Uh, no, I think we're about 100 mil this year. No, no, did, did, you announce the, did you announce the funding? We announced the 84 million funding, yes. Oh, so you brought in 84 million funding and you're about 100 million in revenue. Exactly. Yeah, which is, okay. So that'll give you some of the idea of the valuation. You should I, be at a billion. Yeah. I don't know why it's so, so low. I mean, look at the what's going on. I think it's exposure. It's innovation bubble. It's exposure. You know? And I think the, 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 the linchpin, the watershed event is having uh, HANA, uh, Marriage Made in Heaven. They need that IP yep. to mm -hmm. let them go sell to C-Suite. We need the speed and performance. We and the collapsing of all the complexity. I mean, when you think about having to do this and staging terabytes of data in the cloud and doing it on premise, the ability to collapse that in a single environment and and take a scientific model. So if you go to the, the floor over here, our demo literally has k-means clustering and algorithms running in memory in Hana. So we, you know, this is we have a built set of solutions, and then we can pick those up using the open standards in Hana and just plug them right in. Well, we're big fans of what you're doing because one, we have our own little anal small scale analytics for our, our media business. We have one data scientist. Uh, we have, there you <laughs> okay. have one data right. and, and we use Hadoop because it's free. But what you're doing represents really the future around instrumentation of business and using data to drive real business value. Um, so congratulations and I love, want to follow you guys for forever at this point. I think you'll be very, very successful as you roll out in these verticals. Uh, the question that I have is going forward, okay, in the customer environment, mm -hmm. what's the preferred um, user interface for the customer? Is it dashboard driven? Is it, obviously it's a platform. It's a great question. Do you SaaS, are you platform as a service? What's your, how you it, put, how, how's your look there? You've, you've put your finger on probably the secret to our, our success, right? Because the, we do that, the you, you need a new <laughs> class of interface where it's not, here's, here's really the key. Um, the current paradigm is I have a human being doing some unit of work and I'm gonna let a machine do that work. What we've found is it's both, it's man and machine. Uh, the analogy that I've heard before in our company is you take a grand chess master, you put him up against Watson, Watson it's 50-50, it could go either way. But you take an average chess player, just someone that knows how to play chess pretty well, you put them with the computer he beats the Grand Wizard and the machine every time, right? Because it's human intuition yep. plus what the machine sees. It's getting past our bias, getting past the way we want to see the data, the way we want it to happen. Well, AI has always been grounded in, in training computers with right. some reasoning, meta-reasoning, if mm. you will, so in this the, case. And right. humans are the last mile, as That's I said. it, you got it. So the front end has to be different to say, for example, in our spin intelligence solution, you don't do that data munging or anything else. You walk in, right? And it has like a Facebook post that says, while you were asleep last night, I identified these six areas of spin. Let's go explore them together because I think there's big money to be made here. So what's the UI? Is it dashboard based? Uh, it sometimes HTML5 it's dashboard, it's HTML5, it's those kind of things. Sometimes it's, it's been, you know, it's usually just a uh, runs on iPad, ubiquitous dashboard, but can just as easily be embedded into other solutions, ran on mobile devices. Like BI systems or yeah. Whatnot. So you're, so you're, you're you know, at a self-service? Exactly. We did partner with DataViz, the data visualization folks, mm -hmm. so we got we got that library. And then we've, we've continued to, our focus really going forward is to have front ends that allow you to have these kind of man plus machine conversations. I think this is something. Yeah. Is it something, or I'll give you an example. Yeah, for, it's like you, Apple computer, Apple fruit, you need to have someone figure that out. That's it, right, yeah. exactly. So at, uh, um, have you heard the story about the AIDS virus? That they, they took a machine and they tried to crack the AIDS virus, the actual gene for it, mm. and they couldn't. And then they gave it to people and they couldn't. Well, they turned it into a game, and inside of six weeks, someone had actually, you know, they did a big game, lots of multiplayers playing here, you know, folding. They'd used fold it, and six weeks later, they cracked the AIDS virus. 
And so it was the machine plus the people that made that happen. So how many customers do you guys have? Because that's really the core adoption at Bottleneck at this point. Just not enough people get it. That's so right. I'm sure that's a, that's a great I guess it's a, a sales question. inhibitor. But so how many customers are you currently working with? Well, the, the heritage of this company is, is interesting. Uh, right now it's Fortune 50, very large wealth management, credit card issuers, retailers. And they, as you can imagine, this is a, you know, you walk into the C-suite, this is a competitive advantage, right? Yeah. So they, they're like, okay, well, we for the next six months, we don't want you to talk to our competition, right? So, yeah, so they're, they're yeah, you yeah. got it, exactly. Team a, do Add a couple of zeros to the back of that one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, but, the, but I guess the key here is we're starting with HANA, we believe that there's an opportunity to bring this to market at a certain volume and do these do these signal-based applications. Is it like 10 customers, 100,000? Oh, I, I would say at this point for different solutions, we have 15 wealth management customers for our Mobius solution. We have about 130 for, for what we call our BIQ product, which is the spin analysis uh, piece that SIP is now the executive dashboard for. Um, you know, but it's. I would say it's somewhere around that. We're definitely at the stage right now where I think it's going to explode as people understand the paradigm shift. So as we're talking hundreds of customers, right? Yeah, yeah a, about less than two hundred. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, so, so let's talk about going forward because you obviously are in a sweet spot. It's going to explode. You kind of. I you're think on, so. you're, you're on that line, and all of a sudden it kicks up and goes vertical mm. when the growth comes in. When people kind of rock this, when you go in these conversations, what's the critical um, success? What's the criti What is the biggest sales inhibitor for you? Mm. Put aside that they don't get it, but like mm -hmm. when you go in and you say, "Okay, I can do X for you." Right. I can do kinds of instrumentation, provide this kind of real value. Do they think like almost too good to be true? Is it like I want to do a proof of concept? Where do you kind of great question get that point there? Well, if it's if it's an executive, if it's a uh, if it's somebody who who has walked into a boardroom and said I'll deliver this result, they're already drowning in information. They've got report after report, but they can't make decisions based on fact beyond what's in those reports, right? And so a lot of times. It's about, we'll take those information, and the first step is we'll bring back that set of signals, and we'll say, here's 45 ways of looking at your business you've never been able to see before. And that usually says, okay, now you tell us, you want us to play it out for revenue leak, you want us to play it out for marketing spin, for dynamic pricing, you tell us where you want us to start. And usually they have a very discreet set of, these are our goals for the company, and we want to go that way, but it starts usually with, getting their information and extracting that signal so that they can feel comfortable that we can do what we say we can do. Sean, we're getting the break signal here. We could also go on and do a whole day with you. Um, we love segment. your business. We love what you're doing. We think you're way ahead of the curve right now. Thank Congratulations you. with the HANA deal mm -hmm. uh, in terms of performance. I think, Dave, we should dig into, yeah, into that a little bit later, but uh, breakthrough. Days, Sean, love the minutes. enthusiasm. You were with SAP, you know. I was, and, and you popped out for this opportunity. I mean, this is, SAP is a great company, to, great place to be right Seven now. Seven years at uh, SAP, uh, running uh, competitive sales and, and going up against our competitors. You heard lots of comments from Hasa today, so there was a lot of fun times there. And I just think that this is a new class of impact to customers, yeah. and it was worth. It was, you know, I think coming back here has and seeing Hana working with our solutions. Is the perfect is the perfect marriage the perfect way to go to market together? Well, congratulations, good luck on your new entrepreneurial venture. Uh, you guys got some big fat financing, great customer base to build off of, and great revenue run rate. Congratulations! Hey, thank Thanks you for coming sir. inside the cube. Thank you, Sean. This is a special thank cube uh, coverage of Big thank Data you. meets Business Value. We'll be right back uh, with more coverage from Sapphire now inside the cube right after this short break.